Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today I have a trail cam that I'm going to test out and review. This is a new one that is 4K, uh, so I'm pretty excited to test it out. It also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability with a phone app so I can control it and look at pictures and everything from my phone uh, up to about 75 feet away. But let's open it up and see what uh, it is. So this is by a brand called Yuki. I'll put a product link down below. Um, so you can look at it on Amazon. Obviously, it's it's a small compact unit. You know, I've tested several other cameras as well as of late. Um, some of them are like XTU, and this is kind of similar to that one. Um, but this one is the highest quality uh, one that I've seen, being that it's 4K video and then 30 million pixel uh, pictures are up to 30 million. If you don't want that high of quality, you don't have to uh, be good. All right, so in the box here, we have the camera itself, which pops open, and it's got a screen on it. It's a 2.4 inch LCD screen that you can look at stuff. And then, um, let's see, the batteries are uh, secured in here as well. Let's see how I open this thing up. Well, that's kind of interesting, <laughs> the way it opens up. So it, it's like a little uh, string you pull to open. And now this thing takes uh, that's eight uh, AA batteries. So that's a lot of batteries, but that gives it a long standby time. It does up to six months out in the field um, that it can, it can be out there before the batteries die. So that's pretty good um, time. And then they have the uh, typical um, USB cable for hooking up to your computer if you wanted to. I probably never plan to do that. Um, it comes with a mount that uh, has two little ball mounts here. You pop them open. And so this one allows you to attach to the bottom side of the camera right here. And it's nice because it looks like you know that's on the back side. So you can open it up just fine with it mounted. It, it doesn't require you to disconnect it there. And the other side can go into this little mounting plate that you can screw on to you know, side of the building if you're going to use it uh, for that or um, you could screw this into a tree if you wanted to but the way I plan to use it is how I use my other trail cams. I put them out on the trails <laughs> at my property to look at um, different uh, wildlife that's out there. So it includes just a simple green strap that you wrap around the tree. It has a couple loops on the camera and you strap it to the tree and it's very quick and easy to install. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me get the uh, batteries put in here and then I'll open up my phone. I'll go through what settings there are on here and then we'll go put it out in the woods and then I'll give it uh, several days or a week to uh, kind of do its thing and then we'll take it off and look and see what the quality is like. And um, I'll probably actually compare it to uh, some of my other cameras. I'll put them side by side and and see what they um, they respond, what the trigger speeds are, what the video quality is like for both day and nighttime. So let me uh, let me do that. All right, one thing I did forget to mention: it does come included with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, at least the version I bought it came included with that as a bundle. And then um, the batteries you have to put in yourself, which I just did. Pop this in and now we will turn it on. So let me move the camera so you guys can see. All right, so let's just turn it on here. So down here at the bottom, it has a off setup and on. So I'm gonna go from the off to the setup. And now it kicks on here and you can see that it's in 4K. It looks like the uh, the date needs to be set. So let's go ahead and go into here. And this is where you can see these settings of, uh, you know, the mode that it's in is photo. I can do the PIR is the um, um, sensor for motion and you can tell it how quickly to reset. So let me go into here and I actually like that to be a little bit quicker. Okay, and then sensitivity, we'll leave it um, 
I think at high to start with. And then I can always back it down if, if I don't get enough um, content there. The infrared sensors, the LEDs for night vision, I'm leaving them as auto, so that means they'll kick on if it's dark outside. And for this, uh, you know, photo mode, I can do photo and video. The the downside to doing photo and video is it typically takes the pictures first, and then it'll start the video. So if you really want video of the whole thing, you want to do just video. But for me, I want to show you the quality of both. So I'll do that to capture both of them. This side PIR setup is basically on the front here. I guess I got stickers still on these. I got to take them off. Is these two side ones are optional basically to use for motion. So they're up to 120 degrees total um, when you include these side ones. Or the front one is, I think, just um, 60 degrees. So it's 60 and then 30, 30 extra um, to get you 120 total. All right, so let's keep going down here. So time lapse would be this thing can go out there and just do a time lapse where it's taking pictures. Um, let's see if it gives me some options. Yes, here it goes. So it gives me timing intervals. I can say how quickly do you want to take the pictures? You know, every 30 seconds, every minute, every hour, or you know, some custom number there in the middle. All right, I'm gonna turn this back off. And the monitoring period, so you can set up basically what time. It looks like it gives you two timers to start and stop. So I can, you know, have it by time of day basically. I can say, hey, I only want this at nighttime, or maybe I only want it during the day. Whatever you want, you can set that up here if desired. Okay, so that's those main settings. Now, if I go uh, left to right. I can go over here to image size. So I obviously want to crank this guy up to the full quality so I can see what the quality is. Obviously it's gonna take up more uh, space on my SD card. And then number of photos, I'm gonna have it, oh good, you know, a lot of them only let you take up to three. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do three because that's what I typically do. And then here you can set your shutter speed uh, adjustment there somewhat. So I'm gonna leave it at the default uh, which is the quickest. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the right again. And now I'm going to do the video. So this is the highest quality. It's 4K 30. You can do 2K 30. Um, all the way down to 360. Um, at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to leave it on 4K. Video length. Five seconds, that's not very long, I want much longer. Now, the reason they had this short is one, battery consumption, and two, is SD card storage. But I want to, you know, take a lot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do 20 seconds, and it does sound recording at the same time. Or you can turn it off. Okay, so now I can do in here to date and time, we'll go ahead and set that so that it's today's date. All right, so you can change the time format from 24 hour to 12 hour, left it on 24. Date stamp if you want that on the picture and video or not, you can turn it on and off. Camera name, um, you can change it if I want to. Password settings, so this will be, you know, you can set a password so someone else can't use your camera if they were to take it or something. Uh, I'm gonna leave mine off. Bluetooth is on. SSID is going to be hunting 4K. That's the default. Wi-Fi password for mine is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can obviously change that uh, to something else that you like. Um, auto Wi-Fi is uh, this is how long it takes till it turns Wi-Fi off. So again, this would be uh, really to save the battery. So you don't want to have this guy just um, broadcasting Wi-Fi when you're not there. So you want it to have it auto turn off. So the one minute is gonna leave that English format. So this is, I can format the um, SD card. And then you go back to the default settings. I can see the version and the uh, firmware update. I guess that's one thing to note is that um, USB cable, I'm sure could be used for a 
firmware update, which um, you know might be something you want to check uh, every once in a while. They might add new features. So that's all the settings available in the camera itself. So let's get to the app and see what it does. Okay, so let me go into the Play Store here and I'm going to type in this hunting 4K app. Okay, so now I downloaded the app, I installed it. And it's gonna it has a little video introduction here to show me what to do. But basically, um, you need to make sure you have Bluetooth turned on. Make sure that this guy is All right, so it automatically found the device. And now I just press turn on Wi-Fi. It beeped at me. So now it's saying, um, all right, so you just did a countdown to let it turn itself on. And now 4K hunting show, or hunting 4K shows up. And the password, it shows it actually on the screen here. But we already looked at it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll do connect. Okay, so now it is connected. So I probably manually have to go back. All right, so we're gonna stay connected. The phone doesn't like it because it doesn't see internet use, but that's fine. We don't expect it to have internet use. Okay, so now that's active, and so lo and behold, this guy's already connected to me here. Here we go, so I am on and I'm live there on the camera. So I can go into here, just make this at me. I can take a picture, I can do video, I can look at the album on there. So let's do a, um, I guess I'll do a quick picture. To see what it does. All right, so I think it just took a picture of me. So that doesn't take a picture. That actually switches the mode that it's in. Does it do a video? Does it do photo? Um, okay, so that does video or photo, but then I can press the shoot button and it makes a noise at me. Um, and so we can click here on the album now and lo and behold it shows up and it, you know it can go in there and, and download it so i guess it won't turn sideways it messes it up for you guys um so i can um let's see what i can do here so i can delete it there i don't see okay here we go so back here i can select all and that would select multiples of them and then I can hit download. And so that's gonna download to my phone. Let's go in here to the settings and you see what else there is. This is really the same set of settings that the camera has. I don't see anything new. It's a little easier to use your phone than it is to use the camera just because it's, um, and especially if you want to change the name or something to it, you know, it's much easier for me to do in here since I have a keyboard so I can just name it Nader Tater. Nope, oh, it failed. I didn't like that. Um, 12 characters. Oh, that might have been over. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can't have uh, spaces in there. Um, so there we go, do Nader Tater, and then it tells me how much space I have free there. So um, this guy basically looks ready to go, and you can connect to 
the camera from about 75 feet away is max. And that also happens to be about how far away it detects motion and how far the uh, infrared lights work for night vision. So uh, you do have to go up to it and have it, you turn on the um, Wi-Fi by using the Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is very low energy. And that's how you get it to turn on the uh, Wi-Fi to then actually view the pictures and view the live stream because Bluetooth isn't fast enough for you to view stuff and download the pictures, but the Wi-Fi is. So that's how they kind of get around that problem is they have both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Okay, well, let's put it outside and see uh, what it does. All right, let's get to some footage of it. And first I'll start with the bad. Um, it's really my only complaint. And it has sound, but it really doesn't. Uh, the microphone did not pick up hardly anything. You can hear it here when uh, I open up the door that it does have sound but you can't hear any any talking. Here's the big buck that I had out there. So this is at night time and I want to show the difference of this one versus the XTU trail cam as far as uh, how quickly it captures it and uh, what the quality is like. So here's the second picture and then we'll go to the third picture and then it starts the video so that's what I got out of that big buck. Now if we switch over to the XTU trail cam, you can see the night time is much grainier and it's a slower shutter speed and it does not capture the video because it's already out of frame. So here you can see on the top is the Yuki bottoms XTU. The Yuki is much quicker to react, which is great. Alright, so here we have the uh, Yuki just playing a video and then I'll have the same video of the XTU. Now one thing that I did do kind of wrong was I put these right on top of each other on the same tree and what's happening is the IR light is coming from both of them. So it's kind of over um, exposing that um, that video. That's why um, they look a little bit overexposed. But the other thing you see on the XTU is that it's not a um, 16 by 9 ratio. Um, it's you can do a 1080p one but this is actually cutting off a lot of the deer so here's a side by side you can see the XTU up there in the top right is cutting off those two or three deer on the left side of the footage and it's not as high quality okay so now here's daytime back to the Yuki cam you can see the image quality is really impressive here I zoom in on this to show you the deer and you know there's definitely nothing wrong with this quality this is the best quality i've seen out of a trail cam this is a 30 million pixel picture zoomed in now here's that same buck uh, four point walking around and we'll zoom in on that one as well just to show you that even on the video you can zoom in uh, to get better um, you know clarity even if the object is further away than uh, you know ideal So here we are zooming in on that footage. And so, you know, this deer is probably, right now, he's about 50 feet away from the camera. So uh, pretty far. And then we zoomed in all the way. All right, so now here we have a younger buck with a broken antler. And then we have a bigger buck back in the woods there. And that light changed. Again, that's the IR light of the other camera. So I have two cameras out there. Uh, really I should uh, avoid that in the future okay so here's that bigger buck walking uh, this isn't the biggest buck though that that was earlier so this is a you know medium-sized buck coming through there and then here's a um, you know young family of uh, does out there just showing you what the footage is like for something that's sitting still in this time there was not a secondary IR light so this is what the footage would look like with just the Yuki cam. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as always, I uh, appreciate you guys uh, liking the videos, subscribing to the channel, and commenting anything you have below, and I will try to answer them the best I can. Take care.